Um, great, thank you, Stephen, um, and thank you all for being here today. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Aris Pantelias, um, and I'm a senior lecturer at UCL. Um, so the session that um, we're starting right now is the session that is dealing with the uncertainty that suppliers are facing um, during the construction phase. Um, and my presentation is entitled Reducing the Cost of Major Infrastructure Procurement in Publicly and Privately Financed Projects. Uh, now, before I go into the, into the main body of the presentation, um, I'd like first to acknowledge um, the International Transport Forum and OECD um, and Dayan, obviously, for leading um, this working group, convening and supporting the work of this group over the last um, um, few months that we have been part of it, at least and earlier, because um, I think it started two years ago. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that I have been tasked with the, um, um, to summarize three different discussion papers in a, in a short presentation of, of 15 minutes. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge all authors and co-authors of these three different papers. The first one on risk pricing and infrastructure delivery is the one that was authored by UCL with the contribution of external partners from the industry. The second one, risk allocation in Danish mega projects, was authored by Sunden Belt, um, and we have colleagues here as well. And then the third one was efficiency and innovation in infrastructure projects, um, and this was authored by a, a consortium of universities from Sweden and uh, the Netherlands, um, Lulea University, KTH, Real Institute of Technology, and the Delft Institute of Technology as well. So I will be presenting findings and, uh, and um, um, proposals and recommendations coming from all three reports. Um, the other thing um, I need to mention is that um, this presentation, as you might have expected, is not the full story, it's just a summary of, of what these reports um, contain. So if you want to use a proverbial example of a tip of an iceberg, this is exactly what this presentation does. It just scratches the surface. And I would encourage um, all of you to kind of dig deeper into the contents of these reports to get the full story um, and the full picture of what I'm going to be talking about very briefly in the, la in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so um, the objective, I guess, of, of all these three reports um, um, coming together was to identify how cost of major infrastructure projects can be reduced, and each report added a sort of um, its own stream into answering this bigger type of question. Um, the first report um, aimed to understand the impact of uncertainty on risk pricing for infrastructure projects. Um, the second one to highlight the impact of risk allocation on project delivery through particular examples that uh, our Danish friends were, were facing. And the third one was to explore the impact of collaboration on project efficiency and innovation, particularly with respect to collaborative forms of um, project delivery. So what we did, um, pretty standard. We investigated, obviously, um, each one of us, each group, um, its own task, um, risk and uncertainty, risk allocation, collaboration, and project performance in terms of efficiency and innovation were all looked into. Um, the reports considered different types of delivery models, starting from um, the ones that are considered dominant in the market, like traditional um, design, bid, build, which most governments are familiar with, but also going into design, build, and EPC type of, of delivery under the context of, of uh, public-private partnerships. Uh, but also, um, and especially the last report by the Swedish and the Dutch consortium, they looked into more collaborative delivery models, touching upon um, early contractor involvement, alliancing, but also other types of, of hybrid models like um, collaborative design built, um, for example. Um, and just to mention that all reports started by looking, obviously, at the scientific literature um, behind these topics, um, but a lot of the findings and a lot of the things that we report are based on actual projects that we have brought forward in our reports. Um, the report by UCL touched upon four different um, case studies. Um, the Danish report on the three projects that they have been predominantly managing and developing, and then the Swedish and Dutch report on 10 projects from Sweden and the Netherlands. So, um, brief overview of some major um, titles, you know, in terms of what was found in these three reports. I guess one of the main messages to, um, to bring forward is that risk pricing is indeed um, a difficult undertaking. Um, projects are unique. Um, they're not necessarily rep replicable. Um, the industry itself is rather opaque with not much transparency about how risk pricing takes place. Um, and data, um, kind of, of returning to the point that Dayan was mentioning, uh, was making earlier today, um, data is either not collected or is not shared because it has proprietary nature. So it's not in the interest of the people that own it to share it with others. So the combination of all these factors is what makes, um, makes it very difficult to benchmark project costs um, across different projects and across different industries. Um, 
Another major finding is that uncertainty in risk pricing depends on the um, interrelation of four basic elements. Um, and these elements um, are the delivery model, um, in terms of whether we're using a design build, a design bit build, or an EPC type of delivery or collaborative models. Um, the procurement process, in the sense that um, how competition for the contract is induced and what are the different types of behavior that come with this type of procurement process. Um, the contract design with respect to the responsibilities and obligations that come in the contract, the level of flexibility, the payment mechanism, the incentives that are part of these contractual arrangements, but also and very importantly on the contractor's own perception of uncertainty that is influenced a lot by the interrelations um, between um, the delivery model, the procurement process, and the uh, contract design. And because of this very lack of evidence, um, these interrelationships are not very well understood which is what compounds the project and pretty much leads to a, a list of um, if uh, yeah a list of contractor risk pricing challenges which have to do with the delivery models and the fact that some of them are adversarial in nature or that too much risk is is um, trying to be pushed on the contractor um, different types of issues that um, come from the financing requirements and the, the, the very fact, for example, that lenders require a certain level of certainty to commit financing to particular projects. Information provision or the lack of it in terms of data dumping of the contractor that cannot make sense of the information they receive or lack of information, meaningful information that they can process to, do, to, um, to price their bids. Timing constraints in terms of poorly designed procurement processes that allow too little time for contractors to, um, to m meaningfully price their bids, but also methodological issues, as mentioned earlier again by Dayan, um, a lot of, of the pricing process depends on individual um, um, people and groups within organizations that do not necessarily um, base their, um, their estimates on scientific methods and, and data, but mostly on, on, on non personal experience. Um, so, uh, moving on with other findings, the interrelationship between design and construction is obviously a very key concept um, in, in moving forward, and that determines a lot how the interplay between design clarity and flexibility um, uh, manifests itself in the different types of delivery models. Um, infrastructure delivery also, we have found, has not really kept pace with the changing nature of projects. So, given um, increased, increased complexity and size of projects um, nowadays, um, some existing set solutions from the past um, would not necessarily be fit for purpose anymore, and a certain level of customization might be necessary in order to achieve better results and reduce um, risk pricing premium. Um, so, um, a couple of, of uh, I guess, um, 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 figures from the report that are, are useful to mention. This one shows um, two lines, the red line and the blue line, and this shows that the discrepancy between um, um, cost estimation as we move from the conceptual st um, st you know, uh, stage of design all the way to construction. And obviously, the closer we get to construction, the more the estimates um, are coming together, um, the ones that we have and the ones that um, as it should be, let's say, based on the actual um, reality of the project. So the choice of the delivery model by the client, as well as how early um, the bidders are getting involved in this process, plays a very significant role um, on getting the estimates right um, during, the, during the delivery process. Um, another useful um, um, graph here is also showing the different types of interrelations between the financing methods, the delivery models, but also the contracts that are used. Um, so um, depending on the starting point, whether it is public finance, or privately financed projects, we might have a lot of different types of delivery models that require um, contractors to price a different um, scope of works. And, and, and then again, depending on the, on, the on the contract and the incentives in the contract or the payment mechanism, um, different type of risk is pushed to the contractor, which is uh, um, um, summarized by the, by the notion of contract power. Um, moving on, um, risks must first be well understood um, in order to be efficiently allocated. And, and um, another, another um, important finding that came out of the Danish report is also that risk allocation af is affected by fundamental choices made um, during procurement. So one of their examples is, for example, that the choice between going for a board tunnel compared to an immersed prefabricated one creates um, a completely different risk profile for a project that, needs, that then has to be managed by the client organization and has repercussions on the way that the project is delivered subsequently. Um, finally, some findings from the, from the Swedish and Dutch report. Collaboration can be described by four dimensions, um, scope, depth, duration, and intensity. 
And each of these dimensions, um, as identified and defined in this report, can have a very different impact, either positive or negative, on project performance when it comes to efficiency and innovation. And um, um, I guess a typical example from this report is that um, when it comes to scope, which is um, how many actors and organizations participate in these types of projects and collaborate early on, if we bring the financiers early on um, in these types of projects, then we're increasing the efficiency, for example, when it comes to, um, um, to revenue collection and, and understanding the related risks, because this is very much the focus of financiers. But at the same time, this might be stifling innovation because of the limited risk appetite they might, that they might bring to the project. So again, a positive and a negative influence there. So um, just to say in terms of, of, of uh, some of the recommendations that uh, we put forward, and again, this is just a, um, an appetizer in this, re in this uh, presentation. Um, the interesting thing was that although these three different groups were working independently, there was a lot of overlap in the final recommendations that we came up with. Um, so the very first one is about matching design clarity and flexibility to the delivery model um, and the characteristics of the project. Um, one of our um, firm recommendations, for example, in terms of, of um, design, build, public-private partnership or collaborative models is that the client, um, the public client needs to have produced um, um, a fully costed reference design before they go to tender. And this requirement might even be a lot more stricter if we're going to, uh, to, to projects um, procured like design, with design bid built, where a fully costed um, and fully priced and fully approved design needs to be in place. Um, at the same time, there is a sort of, of um, debate between um, the interplay between efficiency, flexibility, and innovation in these types of, of delivery models. Um, and they're not, uh, they don't have to be mutually exclusive, and I think that's going to be also part of our debate today, um, of our discussion rather than debate. Um, Early and continuous focus on risk management is very important in terms of um, understanding risk before we move forward to allocating or mitigating it. And collaborating in this respect becomes very um, something that we, that, we, that we put forward as a suggestion. Using, um, for example, common risk registers is a very good practice that we have identified and put forward as a suggestion between the client organization and the, and the, um, and the bidders. Um, the final three recommendations. Um, information provision, data collection and sharing, um, that obviously increases the transparency of, of pricing and, and provides information for others to follow. Um, communicating eff effectively and efficiently throughout the delivery process, again, is key. Um, careful selection of delivery models in the sense that as private client organizations are, are graduating from the design bid build, uh, bid build traditional model of, of delivery to more advanced ones and more collaborative ones, then obviously they should not underestimate the skills and the knowledge that is required to make these um, delivery models successful. Um, and that's why also in our discussion in the panel that, that, uh, that will come after this presentation, we will be discussing the need maybe for internal capacity versus just hiring these skills um, on a project by project basis. Um, finally, well-prepared procurement processes um, in terms of, of clarifying what the, what the client is looking for, um, clarifying the award criteria, uh, making sure that the duration is, is sufficient for everyone to do their job properly is, will go a long way in terms of, of uh, reducing you know, bid pricing inefficiency, but also in, um, you know, increasing the quality of the bids received um, on, the, on the public sector side. So um, these were, again, just, just um, um, small um, snippets, I guess, from, from these three reports um, that we have um, um, produced as part of this um, working group. So thank you all for your attention, and uh, let's, I guess, move forward with, uh, with the panel discussion now on some of these issues.